What's up, everybody? It's Joe from Complex. We're in New York City at Stadium Goods with 19-time Grand Slam champion and tennis legend Roger Federer. They asked me, what about collaborating with Michael? And I'm like, well, yes, mm -hmm. of course. I right. mean, he's my hero. Gonna do some sneaker shopping today. Gonna see what he's feeling, what he's not, and then uh, hopefully he's gonna buy some sneakers. Hopefully. <laughs> nice to see you, Joe. Let's go. Roger, I want to talk about you growing up Sundays watching NBA clip shows, and that's how you became a fan of Jordan. Is that true? Absolutely. I watched every Sunday show. Michael was the guy. He transcended basketball and was a hero of our entire generation, I think. So we see it here. I mean, yeah. look, the, the wall is right. just all Jordan. And like, this is where it hits you again. You know how much he, he's done on the court and how much it went into the streets and just uh, how popular he was um, in Switzerland and in Germany. And where I grew up, he was so big and so well liked, so successful, well spoken. There was everything about him. He had the, the perfect run going for so long, and then, and then he retired, and yeah. I couldn't believe it. And I then, know. thank God, he came back one right. more time and right. one more time. <laughs> Talk about that lineage of John McEnroe wearing the Nike Air Trainer One and Agassi with the Tech Challenge, and mm -hmm. you know, you were kind of next in line to carry on the tradition. What do you remember about those guys that was so special? Well, they were. They were extreme, you know. I mean, John from here, from New York, and just his personality. I mean, I, I loved watching him play, even though he was just a bit before my time. And then I was lucky enough to play through the Agassi era, and he's really the guy who pushed the envelope afterwards. The denim shorts and the, yeah. the, the long hair and the look and images everything, and who cares about the results? But as long as you kind of are the guy, I mean, he was unbelievable. And how he transcended tennis as well, you know, Andre and John were really important, I think, within tennis. When we we look to guys, though, those are really two important people. Roger, Jordan was such an innovator in that he took risks. Like, it. this shoe was a big deal because it was the first shoe to feature patent leather and he played in it. Right. You also like to take risks with your footwear. Even, you know, Wimbledon, the orange soles, they wouldn't let you wear it. How important is it to stand out and take those design risks? with Encore shoes? I mean, I think you don't want to do it every time, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's good fun, you know, like you said, with the orange shoes, uh, uh, the sole I was wearing at Wimbledon, I wasn't sure it was going to pass. It didn't. I was allowed to wear it one match, then not anymore, and I paid the price for it. I lost in the second round right oh, after. Man. But this was a bold and risky move, you know? It's like the tuxedo-looking shoe yeah. almost and bringing it onto the court. That, back in the day, that was a big move, and I like it. And I think it's important to take chances and see if it sticks or not. Definitely. And another thing, there's a story of your father leaving you at a tennis court yes, growing up. It's a good story. Once upon a time when I went to practice with my dad and of course we're always fighting because nobody ever listens to your to your dad. Right. You know, like I never, now my kids don't listen to me. <laughs> so I get all frustrated. And he said, look, if you keep behaving the way you're behaving, I'm just going to leave and I'll see you at home. And I, of course, I kept on misbehaving. And right. he's like, that's it. He left a five a Swiss franc. It's a big Swiss franc coin we have in Switzerland. Put it on the bench and say, I'll see you at home. And home was far away. It was like an hour by tram and bus and the whole thing. And I thought there's no chance he would have done that. So I waited on the bench for like 20 minutes. He never returned. I went to the parking lot to see if the car was there. He was gone. And in some way, I guess it marked me. I said, okay, I have to grow up. I have to behave better. If I want to become someone, you know, I can't behave this way. So uh, it reminds me of the good old days, like how, uh, how rebellious I used to be. Roger, everyone who knows sneakers knows the genius of Tinker Hatfield, but you've actually worked with him hands-on. What is it like for people who don't get the chance to work with him? He is an uh, incredible mind, you know, uh, super inspired and uh, very fast working, I find, you know, like I, when I spoke to him about the new tennis shoe, the Vapor, mm -hmm. he was like, okay, so what do you want? And I was like, well, I always like the comfort fit of a jogging shoe. And I always feel like these tennis shoes, they need like an hour and a half to break in. He's like, okay, let me address that issue. Came out with the Vapor and I mean, it was like a genius shoe and he drew it on his iPad, you know, like That's all crazy. I heard that it was like the first time he's designed something on the iPad. Yeah. What was that like? He was doing his thing and like, I thought he was just really just having fun with it. Next thing you know, it's like, here we are. We got the Vapor even with the collaboration with Jordan. Yeah. He worked so many Jordans on. I mean, it's been, it's been a dream. There are frequent collaborators with Jordan, but not everyone gets to do the iconic Jordan 3. What was it like getting that model? 
Well, I mean, they made it easy for me, okay. let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. they, they asked me, so um, what about collaborating with Michael? And I'm like, well, yes, mm -hmm. of course. I right. mean, he's my hero, so of course I'd like to. And then they're like, well, but which, which number, which model would you like to work on with? And I, you can pick. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, the three, obviously, yeah. you know, let's, let's do it. And then we, we, we started coming up with the white. And they said, like, well, if we're doing the white, we've got to do the black. Of course. And I mean, I love the elephant print. So for me, that, that was a dream come true. Because looking back, I can always say I have a shoe with Michael. Roger, a classic silhouette, the Air Force One. Classic. What are your favorites off court? I love Air Force Ones. I don't wear them as much as I should because I have so many other ones like the Air Maxes and they're endless, you know, and then the Jordans, of course. But I mean, the Air Force Ones, the Linn, especially, yeah, this, you know, the pink one. I mean, I love them. I just think they're timeless, they're easy, they're smooth. Uh, and they're, they're the classic Air Force ones. So when I when I saw them being re-released again, that was very exciting. And then I also like the Comme des Garçons one. I like Prince as well, so okay. that's why I love this one. Now to get them, what is it a call? How easy is it for Roger Federer to get a classic Nike? I do get I do get the no. I do get the no sometimes. You know? Really? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm actually happy it's this way because it can't be like, okay, please send me this one and. It comes and... The chase is fun sometimes. The chase is the fun bit, basically. And then you want to wear them too. You can't order too many shoes as well. So, um, yeah, but for the most part, they take care of me. Right, definitely. <laughs> A really cool collaboration that came about was Supreme doing their spin on the up-tempo. And I love it because, I mean, I'm grew up in the time of the air, mm -hmm. you know, the air was a big deal and then Pippen was a big deal and the up-tempo and now the supreme collaboration and the gold and when I got it, when I went to Nike headquarters, they gave me the shoes like, this is like a little gift from us, you know, for you, yeah. when you're taking off. And I remember I had it at home and like had it with me on the on the road and I just couldn't do it. They really? Wear it. If then you it, wear that out and you get photographed, the internet would go crazy. You'd <laughs> so be on but then all I the did wear, But then I did kind of wear it a little bit subtly, sort of around the tennis scene. Okay. And everybody was like, oh my God, cool shoes. I was like, yeah, thank you. Well, we talked about everything. Now is the easy part. You get to browse the shelves and see what you're feeling. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Could I have these in the 11 and a half? Of course. Thanks a lot. Gary Payton. Air Force One later. Yes, please. It's going well. That <laughs> gets expensive here. Yeah. Good? <laughs> and the classic South Beach LeBrons. All right. Appreciate it. So your total will be 5,185 and 72 cents. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, just uh, Now I have to explain it to my wife. Thank you very much. Take care. See you. So, Roger came through, bought a bunch of classics. Thanks so much for stopping by, man. Pleasure was mine. Thanks a lot.